Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. In today's video, I'm going to go over the five mistakes you need to avoid when trying to build players in Dynasty mode. Before we get into the video, as always, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Every like goes a long way. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Let's keep grinding to 30K. Comment down below if you have any advice to add to these videos, as always. And if you have any questions, and if you haven't already, follow me down below on Twitter. You can always DM me over there, have me rate your dynasty, etc. And of course, check out Underdog in the link below. Sign up now to get your bonus so you are prepared for the college football season and the NFL season. So the first mistake to avoid when starting your season is properly going through your red shirts. People, a lot of people are just skipping this step or just not understanding it, so avoiding it. Not doing this properly hurts your dynasty so much. Red shirts are so important for more than a few reasons. So what you wanna do at every, what I like to do, and I was talking to a few people about this, some other viewers yesterday about this. There's, the way I like to do this is first and foremost, you can't check out your player card from the red shirt screen, which is incredibly dumb. So you can't do it here. So what I recommend doing first and foremost is go to your roster and go look at every single player that you want to redshirt and make a list. You can write it down. You can go ahead, you can put it on your notepad on your iPhone, your Android, your iPad, wherever you like. I go to roster and what you want to do is come over to these players and hit Y and or triangle on them, the players that you think are redshirt eligible. So what I like to do is go by position and I go through each one. So for quarterback, I'm going to decide pretty much at almost every position, at least one player or two that should be redshirted. You don't need every player available for game day. So for instance, Colin Hurley, Go in here and you want to start assessing if they're redshirt eligible. I have plenty of videos on how to assess if they're redshirt eligible. I have a redshirt video. I have a stat cap video. I have a dev trait video. Make sure to check all those videos out so you guys can understand this better. So I don't waste too much time on this one. But you want to check out their dev trait. You want to check out their overall. You want to check out their stat caps. And that pretty much tell you if they're worth redshirting or not. If their stat caps are pretty open and they have a good dev trait, that all comes down to so if they have a great dev trait and a high overall, you probably want to play them or get them some game time. If they're a low overall with high stat caps, you definitely want to get them some redshirt time to increase their window to keep them developing over the years. So that's the first thing you want to make sure that you go through each position one by one, like wide receivers. I have like what feels like 20 here, right? More like probably 12, maybe 10, but you want to go through here. I don't recommend redshirting juniors and seniors. They're mostly capped out for the most part. They're near their peak of their career. Their big jump windows kind of gone. They're probably higher overalls. Those are players that are going to see the field or at least be depth during game day. So I really only recommend redshirting freshmen for the most part and maybe sophomore if you see the potential. I'd say, let's say there's a sophomore you see here, for instance, like a, let's say a tight end that had good speed and you know they're not going to start this year because Mason Taylor's still here and then you have Green. So maybe you may want to redshirt him to keep him for next year because you're going to want him as the backup to trade as Green in the next year. So there's some sophomores that I could see making a case for, but definitely be going through and assessing your whole redshirt situation. Write it down and then you can go back to the redshirt screen and you can apply them, which is pretty simple enough. You just click on them and they will be redshirted. The next mistake people make when building their team, and this really hurts it, really, really hurts the development, is not checking the development trade of players. So like I said, just to break this down, I have a video on it again, but dev traits impact how quickly they gain XP. So a player that has a really high dev trait should be used in game because they actually will accrue XP and level up quicker in that sense, right? So you don't want to be leaving guys like elite dev and star dev mostly as a red shirt. The only way I'd recommend a red shirt if they're super low overall because they will need the extra year to keep reaching their ceiling. But for instance, a guy like this would be, let's say Jelani Watkins, 72 overall, if you click on him, He's a star dev player, which means he levels up pretty quickly. So you could take two approaches. He's technically a low overall, but he is a wide receiver. So positions that I can kind of stat pad, like wide receiver, running back, tight end, I mostly with a star dev or above want to play them on offense because I can stat pad them. I can get them a ton of XP. And then when they get all those skill points, they'll upgrade in the off season. So those are the guys that I want to be definitely, I want to have them on the field. Now, players that are impact dev, you probably want to red shirt if they're low overall and you care for them a little bit because those guys aren't going to get that much XP. So you're going to want to kind of give them an extra year to potentially get an end of the season big upgrade. Now, there are some other instances where this doesn't work as well. So let's say, let's say you have a bunch of middle linebackers or a bunch of cornerbacks, right? A bunch of players on the team and it's a cornerback. They're not the easy position to build. So in this instance, when looking at dev trades, even if they have star, I may still not start them because I do want to give them some extra time. So let's say this freshman had star dev, I'd probably still leave him on the bench because he's a corner. He's not going to play well. And he's not going to get many stats. But checking your dev trades are so important. You do not want to leave an elite guy on the bench because those years are so important to build them. They can get XP at an increased rate. You definitely want them on there. The only exception to that is when they're super low overalls. Like I said, if they're 73, 72 and below and they have no place on the field, 
go ahead and just leave them redshirted, but make sure you're at least redshirting them and not just letting them fall behind. The next most important tip, and this one is huge, and I feel like a lot of people are missing this, is going through and assessing stat caps. So if you go on your player and press Y, this and all these things come together to be able to build your players up to 99 overall. If you go to ratings, every player has a stat cap, and these stat caps are pretty much gonna tell you how good they can be. So a lot of players were commenting, a lot of people were commenting on my videos like, hey, I had a guy with elite dev, he only ended up at an 84 overall, why is that? Or I had some guys who said, I had a guy who was a 78 his uh, freshman year, but he only ended up as like an 84. Yeah, so if you look at these stat caps, those grayed out mark blocks right there at the end of power, those tell you how good he can be. For instance, Tradez Green is a guy to, to kind of show this with. When they only have like one stat cap at the end, that means they can get pretty high into their ceiling. And when they have two, it's less. So for instance, Tradez Green here can probably get into the low early 90s, probably the low 90s, really high 80s, because he has a few stat caps, but not many. That means he could basically reach of really high potential here. And also keep in mind that some of these stat caps don't apply to a player as much as you might think. So for a tight end, everything here pretty much matters for their overall, all is gonna go a long way. The blocking is not as important for a tight end. That's kind of like him, a vertical threat tight end, but all of it goes a long way. So trade as green could probably get pretty high. And the reason you wanna look at stat caps is because if you see a guy with like no gray or barely any like trade as green, these are guys that, you, that, that can build a lot. And in these instances, you wanna make a quick decision. Trade as green has star dev, he's a tight end, I can stat pad him, has a big has a big ceiling, I'm probably playing him. Another instance, a cornerback. Star dev, can't stat pad him, has really big stat caps, I'm probably redshirting him. Why is that? I'm redshirting him because that gives him an extra year to grow. I can't directly build a cornerback and play cornerback and use a cornerback like I would like to. So by giving him an extra year, that gives him a year to grow up to like an 80 overall in the off season. And then you could bring him in the field that gives him an extra year of eligibility and he has high stack cap. So his potential is crazy high. So let's give you some examples of guys that don't have crazy high stack caps. So if we come over to Marshall, come over to wide receiver or sorry, cornerback, if we go all the way down here, there is this first guy, Foster. He's a 76 overall sophomore, 94 speed. You may be thinking that's high speed. He's pretty young. He's a sophomore. I want to give him a chance and let him sit there and let him play. Here's the thing. Or you might say, let me redshirt him. Just give him another year of development. If you come over to ratings, look at his stack caps. They are horrendous. He'll never be an elite zone guy. His hands will never be elite. His man coverage will never be elite. His power is actually pretty solid, but it won't be elite. His run stopping will be average and his quickness will actually be the only thing that he gets elite at. So he's going to pretty much be a bad corner that's really athletic and that's going to be a ceiling. So understanding how stat cap works will hopefully give you guys a much better understanding of ceilings and how development works and how player progression works. So a lot of people are doing this backwards. You know, they're, they're starting impact dev and normal dev guys as freshmen and then they're benching elite dev guys or, or redshirting them when they could be stat padding them or they're giving or they're stat padding the hell out of a normal dev guy with bad stat caps so he's not gonna upgrade in the offseason well because he's normal and he has no stat caps so he's not gonna get that high anyways so make sure you are monitoring all these stat caps on your freshman there's a great way to decide too if you have two quarterbacks one quarterback has unlimited caps nothing there and has a good dev trait you're starting that guy or you're redshirting that guy that's the guy you're prioritizing the development on but that's enough for that one. When prioritizing development, the next most important thing is to make sure you are looking at your coaching packages. A lot of people are forgetting about these when talking about development. So right here under motivator, these first four are great. Bonus XP for players and players draft in the top three rounds. Quarterbacks get an off-season training boost. So overall, across any position you want to do, that off-season training boost is what I was referring to. This increases their off-season training boost and gives them a better boost, which is at, which is great because that means that when you have high stat caps and you have the increase the boost, it allows the boost to go even higher in that sense, right? Because let's say you were a normal and you had that package and you had really bad stat caps. In that sense, you're not really going to get much out of this, but by getting that ability and then making sure that you're getting players that have open ended stat caps is a great way to make sure the ceiling on your roster just skyrockets as you force transfer guys with bad stat caps out and keep recruiting guys with good dev trades and good stat caps into the program. And then of course, if you come on down to architect, another really big one right here is limitless. Increase a random skill cap when leveling. So think about trade as green. Trade as green is a guy that's borderline elite, but has a few minor one-off stat, uh, stat caps. If you were to get limitless for tight ends or for, I would recommend honestly, big position groups like offensive line, defensive line, ones that impact a lot of people. But if you were to get it for tight ends, right? For this guy, you'd essentially in wide receivers, another great one. This would allow so that when he upgrades in level or overall, he could potentially break a stat cap. And if he breaks a stat cap, then he can become elite. So this again, just keeps increasing the ceiling and all the way at the bottom, put a ring on it. That's the one that's being covered by my face cam. Chance to increase your best skill cap when you win a conference title or a national championship. That one is solid, but it's only solid if you're a winner. Like if you're Georgia or Ohio State or you're in an offline dynasty and you're just winning every year, that one's great. Because let's just say you have a quarterback with 97 throw power and he's capped at that 
and that's his best rating, you can win a national championship. And when it all when it progresses, he may stack half his throw power, or uh, Jalen Moreau may stack half his speed. That stuff is really, really helpful, but that one's only beneficial if you're winning a lot. If you're a program that doesn't win too much or you're in a very competitive online league, it won't be the most beneficial of the amount of abilities you can get, right? Because it costs a lot to get all the way down there and you gotta go through a few, but make sure you are using these to get your XP bonuses up. So the next thing you wanna avoid is forgetting about weekly awards and overall season awards. A lot of people are telling me this stuff doesn't matter, and that's just not the case. When you win player of the week awards, you do get more tokens for your players. You do get other things for your players, and those are super important. Although it doesn't really specify here, you do have player goals in that sense in terms of getting XP for these things. So you wanna be one playing, you wanna be making sure that you are making an active effort every week. Like I said, stat pad your wide receivers, your tight ends, your running back. Be going out of your way to actually get them stats. If we click on CJ Daniels here, and we go over, you see his XP bar is pretty high. Now, some people may say that was like that, perhaps, but that's not the case. <laughs> they, When you win weekly awards, you get you just two skill points in the corner. When you win weekly awards, your XP goes up. And especially when you're an elite development player, he's only impact, that goes up even higher. So winning those awards is exactly how I got Jelani Watkins up to a 90 in his freshman year after the offseason. At one time when I played the full league through and stat padded him. Winning yearly awards, Heisman, etc. That all goes a long way. So the, the weekly awards are the first ones because those are the ones that happen weekly. But you do want to go over and eventually start to do the tracker to see the awards. So if you're coming over here, you can see award watch list. And this is a great way to just go through and see where you stand. I love going through this list all the time, week by week. Of course, I'm simming through this season. So you may not see me up there as much as I'd like. But if you go through and just doing this is a great way to keep in touch. So whenever you have a chance, you want to be winning awards. Now, the year necessarily doesn't matter of the player because dev trade is independent of such, right? So if you're a junior and you have elite dev, and you hit on one of these awards, you get a lot of skill points, you're gonna upgrade pretty fast. So obviously, I mean, if it's a senior, you don't really care too much because if it's a senior, I mean, it might be nice to go out with a big bang and get the award, but as a senior, it's not gonna help you so much. Like Jeremiah Smith being an 85 overall freshman, winning this best receiver award will get him a ton of XP. He has a good development trade and I'll go a long way in making sure that he hits 90 right after this off season. So just go through each one. There's plenty of awards to win and just track where you are. See, see what you have a realistic chance of winning. And you may notice that like, if you play the season, you probably have a bunch of offensive guys in there like quarterback, running back receiver somewhere in there and just start to stat pad them and make sure that you you finalize these awards and get them those xp especially when they have a good development trait like star or elite or in any case you still want to win it but again make sure you are tracking these awards i feel like that's one of the things people think don't matter and it does but yeah that's it for the video hope you guys did enjoy if you're new to the channel subscribe this helped give the video a big thumbs up that always helps as well and of course follow me on twitter if you haven't already thanks so much for watching i'm out peace